What's up guys, Max Maxworks here and today we will be installing a three core aluminum radiator in the Blazer. So why are we doing this? Uh, unfortunately I didn't realize the motor mounts were trash before we went off-roading the first time and it caused the engine to move and caused the mechanical fan to basically destroy about half of the fan shroud and without getting super far into like fluid dynamics Basically, if you have a fan with no shroud, you're not going to move any air. Or you're not going to move a lot of air through a radiator. Um, so you can have a perfectly working fan, but if you have no shroud, you're going to get nowhere. So, I couldn't find another factory shroud. The old radiator is full of uh, crap, um, to be honest with you. The uh, trans cooler part of the radiator is leaking a little bit. And for 200 bucks, I got a brand new 3-core aluminum radiator with the transmission cooler, with fans, and a shroud delivered to my door from eBay. So let me show you guys this thing. All in all, it actually looks really good. It's really impressive. Uh, the welds could be better, but I don't see anything that like throws a red flag. This shroud is beautifully made. Um, these fans are um, pretty solid. They're 212s. This shroud and this fan layout is basically factory LT1 stuff or uh, later small block stuff. You've got a brass drain, which is cool. You've got inch and a half inlet and outlet. You've got your trans cooler lines. And this right here is for the heater core. Um, and it comes with a brass plug. So if you're running a race car and you don't have a heater core, um, you don't need to use this. It's got the uh, coolant overflow and it's got a nice cap on it. It's a really nice unit. I'm really impressed with it. Um, basically these fans will be wired together. The only thing that's kind of shitty about this is it comes with this, which is a uh, grounded sensor. Basically, the way this works is when the sensor gets temperature, it connects this plug to the body, which is in the block, to ground, which turns it off. But this relay system is designed for a hot switch on. Um, so basically, this wiring is wrong. We'll have to fix that. Uh, but again, for 200 bucks, I was mostly just buying the radiator and uh, shroud and fans and stuff. So this truck's got a factory radiator. Um, all these GMs are really similar. This radiator is like 28 by 19, which you'll find fits everything from uh, full-size cars and trucks to like, I think some uh, G bodies and F bodies. I, I, I'm not a super knowledgeable, but this thing basically fits every GM product ever made uh, with a small block uh, in it. So first steps first is we got to get the old radiator and uh, the fan out of the truck. Um, it's mostly full of water now, not even coolant, so we're just going to dump everything out um, and get it pulled out of the truck. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. So no real trickery here. Cap, um, overflow hose, heater core hose, lower hose, upper hose. Um, then we're going to have to disconnect this down here is the transmission line cooler in and out. And then up here, you've got basically these clamps that hold everything on. We're going to loosen everything up um, then figure out if we got to pull the fan out first or if we can pull the uh, radiator out first. So, okay, so fan is out. Pull these back on. Make sure you put your nuts back on. Obviously, they hold on your water pump pulley. Uh, trans lines are removed obviously they dump some fluid now at this point the radiator should be able to come right out of here so let's take a look at this thing this radiator has definitely seen some better days uh, but I mean it was still serviceable it worked fine it just couldn't keep up with these high temperature days and then here's our fan and as you well no I guess this is just a five blade fan. That's kind of weird. I've never seen an odd number of blades on a fan. But here you can see, we basically have half a radiator shroud. Now the factory shroud comes apart at the midline to make serviceability easier. Um, but the entire bottom half, this is all that's left. So you can see it's pretty fucked up. So next thing I'm gonna do is remove the AC condenser. Um, this truck doesn't have working AC and more importantly, they've undone the lines and so the whole system is full of dirt and grit, um, which is the exact opposite of what you want out of your AC system. So um, maybe at some point a later date with an engine swap, we're gonna fix that or whatever. I'm not gonna throw the condenser away, I'm gonna keep it, 
uh, but I'm going to remove it so it's not blocking the radiator um, and we can just yank it out of the way. So after some consideration I've decided we're just going to make a brand new mount completely different than what's on here. We have these two wonderful holes here this slotted hole and this slotted hole and what we're going to do is basically make a pinch Um, that comes in here and basically holds this radiator in place um, and so I've taken some measurements and thankfully we have a sheet metal bender uh, which we can use to bend some sheet metal and get this done so as you can see this 10 gauge is way overkill but here's the general idea um, basically this goes like this and hopefully it should should clear the hood um, but this is going to hold in place and then we're going to install rubber bushings in here and in here to kind of uh, push it that way and we'll install some rubber bushings on the back of this to keep it uh, just keep the radiator nice and tight but to also uh, control for vibration I had to cut out this little notch next thing we're going to do is we're going to drill these holes uh, for the mounts so that we can get them uh, finished up so there's our mount. It took a little additional shaping. Basically we've got rubber spacers standing off here and here and we've got a rubber isolator on this. As you can see this doesn't move, this doesn't move. Everything's secure. We've got our transmission lines in place. Uh, basically everything fits except for this guy. Um, I need a worm gear clamp which I don't have um, but I actually have some on order so it'll be fine. Um, the next step is we got to get the fans wired up and the first part of that is we got to put the new sensor in. You can see back here, that's a coolant sensor. I'm not really sure what it would have been used on this truck because it's a TBI truck and they didn't have um, like a coolant light. But it doesn't matter. We can just unscrew it and screw in our new one, which is this guy. And then I'm going to show you we're going to make some adjustments to the wiring relay. And then it should be pretty simple. Just a matter of getting everything uh, plugged up, wired up. Shouldn't be too, too bad. So everything is in and you can hear the fans are working. Um, I still need to tidy up all of the wiring, but there you can see everything's in. Um, the fans kick on at 180. The problem I have is that the fans are kind of on their own power circuit. And so these fans are gonna keep running until the engine gets down um, below 180 which is going to take a while, which is going to just kill the battery. Um, so we're also going to have to put in an on off switch on the dash for the fans. Um, but it's not a big deal. Uh, the radiator seems to work. Obviously I won't know until I drive it around. I just wanted to make sure this thing would, uh, would turn on. So for now, I think I'm just going to pull the fuse and, uh, I'll show you guys where I ran, uh, a power switch at the next cut. Okay, so let me show you guys the final product here. So we have our radiator installed. It's fully shimmed. Um, got our worm gear clamp on the overflow. Here is the relay. Now the relay has four wires coming out of it. Uh, the red wire goes straight to the battery. The blue wire goes to the fans, which are wired down there. Um, the black wire from the fans goes to ground. The black wire from here is actually a, a positive wire. I have it run over here, this is ignition power. So basically the fans are only run when the ignition is on, no matter how hot the engine is. Um, and then this white wire runs back there to the coolant temp sensor. So basically the white and black wires um, create your on and off switch. So basically the key has to be on and the engine has to be at temperature for the fans to activate. Um, if you run it straight to the battery, when you turn the truck off, the fans will drain your battery because they'll keep running forever, basically, until the engine cools down. Um, so, pretty simple, straightforward wiring. I'm going to clean it up with a few more zip ties. Not a big deal. Um, the fans, the temperature sensor wasn't marked, but the fans come on at 180 on the dash. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to drive this thing around, see how well it does in, in traffic. It's another scorcher here in Texas today. Um, it's like 102 degrees right now, so it's perfect uh, blazer testing weather to see if uh, if the fix worked. So I'm going to get everything cleaned up, uh, try it out, but everything works. I'm super, you know, the, the fans kick on. 
Uh, hopefully the radiator does, the, does a better job of cooling than the old one did. Um, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. There's a whole host of other videos on this blazer. Hope you guys liked it. Peace.